Now set to make his way to the ring, Lamont Hamhead Peterson. Twenty-one years ago, Peterson was homeless, but around that same time, he met his trainer, Barry Hunter, who supported Lamont and his brother Anthony, also a boxer. And Hunter told us yesterday that when he became a trainer 34 years ago, he never meant to stay in boxing this long. But after helping fighters like Peterson, he can't walk away. Here's his man, Lamont, into the ring. Swift Garcia! Garcia has been trained by his father, walking behind him off his right shoulder. Angel, since he began boxing at age 10, but when Danny was 16, Angel was diagnosed with stage four throat cancer. Danny put his training on hold, and Angel has now been in remission for seven years, and Angel told us yesterday, when it comes to fighting, he is the coach, not the dad. Danny Garcia right there. And a look now at the table of the tape, presented by Corona. Peterson at 31, Garcia 27. You look at the weights, 142 and a quarter, 143. That was yesterday. Then they were weighed unofficially tonight with their clothes on. And Lamont Peterson has picked up 22 pounds, including the clothes. And almost a 15-pound pickup by Danny Garcia as they get ready to go 12 rounds. And again, no standing eight count, no three knockdown rule. Only the ref or the doctor can stop the fight. Can't be saved by the bell. Fight will be official after four rounds against Steve Smoker standing by in case of any controversy. And now back again to the arena announcer, Michael C. Williams. Live from Brooklyn, Premier Boxing Champions now presents tonight's second main event, 12 rounds of action at a catch weight of 143 pounds. The judges at ringside, Don Ackerman, Kevin Morgan, and Steve Weisfeld. Your referee in charge of the action is Harvey Dodd. And now first, introducing the red corner. He wears the white, white trunks with purple. Impressive as a professional. 33 wins, 12, pardon me, two losses with one draw. 17 wins by knockout from Washington, D.C. Introducing Lamar Hamhead Peterson. And his opponent tonight fighting out of the blue corner. He wears the giraffe colored trunks with tan and black trim. He's undefeated as a professional. 29 wins, no losses, 17 victories by way of knockout from Philadelphia, PA. Introducing Danny Swift. Okay, guys, we went over the instructions earlier. Obey my commands at all times. Protect yourself at all times. Touch gloves. Good luck. No question the crowd favorite, Danny Garcia, out of Philadelphia. His family is from Puerto Rico. And Philadelphia, of course, a city that has produced many, many Excellent fighters, the likes of Joe Frazier, Bernard Hopkins, Benny Briscoe, Matthew Saad Muhammad, and Ray, of course, Rocky Balboa. <laughs> yes. Danny Garcia with that dangerous left hook. 
Lamont Peterson, as we touched on earlier, has started slowly in recent fights. In his last bout last August, won by TKO in round 10 against Edgar Santana. And that was here in Brooklyn. Garcia's last fight, second round knockout of Rod Salkin. Uh, dating back to April of uh, 2011, he's faced as, as high a level of opponent as just about any other fighter in all of boxing has not ducked opponents, but he was criticized for uh, taking on the much smaller Rod Salka. <laughs> Garcia with a number of impressive wins, twice over four division champ Eric Morales, plus victories against Amir Khan, Zach Judah, Nate Campbell, Kendall Holt, and the unanimous decision over Lucas Matisse. This after the Matisse knockout of Lamont Peterson. You notice that Lamont Peterson is just moving around the ring, using ring generalship, just trying to feel his man out, just trying to see the power of Garcia, just trying to understand, see what works and what doesn't. Oh, and you see Lamont guy is doing some really good work in this first round here. He's very conscious of the Garcia left hook. He shot a lead right hand earlier. We've done to it. Took a good right hand there, though, and uh, using his jab in this first round. Correction, the fight between Garcia and Saka was a bit more recent. It was last August. Garcia looked at a kind of a warm-up flurry by Garcia. You notice that left hook to the body from uh, Garcia was powerful, was real sharp. I mean, that that left hook is is it's so much power because he's able to maintain his balance, his poise, very composed, very good fighter, Garcia. 29-0, 17 by KO. Although three of his last four fights have gone. The distance, Peterson, 33-2 and 1, 17 by knockout. And three of his last four fights have not gone the distance, including that knockout loss to Matisse in three rounds. In fact, Peterson knocked down three times in that bout. So that's it for round one. Easy, easy. The only trainer okay. Danny Working Garcia up. has ever had Move your head, okay. is Dad Angel. Move your head. Yo, and here's on. a look okay. inside their right, right, special right, right. relationship. All right. Listen, move your head. My father have a beautiful. unique relationship. You know we have a friendship. He's my trainer. It's not about him, it's about you. Champ of the world. A lot of times it don't work because fathers put too much pressure on the fighter and don't let them be a regular person. He's always full of energy, playing around. Sometimes I, I feel like I'm the father and I gotta tell him, chill out. <laughs> here, you gotta give me air, here. Okay, Dan, all right? Don't forget, okay? Nice and easy. Move your head, use your leg, don't jump up. Stand your ground a little bit, okay? Don't jump out, all right? Deep breath, deep breath. All right? Hey, keep, grabbing. keep your eyes on the head. notice blood on the nose. Look to be a minor cut on Danny Garcia. We had an action-packed earlier fight. And Andy Lee put down in rounds one and three by Peter Quillen, who went down for the first time in his professional career in round seven. And it was an unusual split draw. And the way both fighters handled it well afterwards. It was literally no question in their minds. Because they have that heart, that, that intestinal fortitude, determination. Those qualities you can't, you can't make happen. It is natural. Look at here, Lamont Peterson. He's doing the right thing. He's boxing, staying on the outside, trying to frustrate Garcia. Al touched on the background of Lamont Peterson, which is pretty extraordinary. He's come a long way at the age of 10, homeless, uh, without parents. Father was in prison. His mother abandoned him. He and his brother living in two shelters, taken under the wing of trainer Barry Hunter, as was his brother Anthony. And 
led to successful amateur careers for both Lamont and Anthony for Lamont, a National Golden Gloves Championship back in 2001. And on to the professional ranks where he has done well. The movement of Lamont Peterson is, is great. And what he's, he's really is frustrating uh, Garcia at this point here. He just cannot be a stationary target. And what Garcia needs to do and wants to do is get him against the ropes or in a corner. And you see so far the first two rounds, Lamont Peterson couldn't ask for anything better. He's came out, he showed his amateur background. He could fight both styles, either coming forward or boxing. Today he's choosing to box and he's having some, uh, some success against Danny Garcia. As we mentioned, Peterson oh. has had a history of, of slow starts. Does not seem to be the case here in the first couple of rounds. Well, he can't afford to have a slow round here against a puncher like Garcia. He needs to stay on the outside, use that hand speed, use his, okay, that, that, that background of, of great amateur uh, fights, stay on the outside. Garcia noted for that left hook. Haven't seen it yet. Went to the right hand. Peterson just picking away here. Well, Lamont Peterson going to the jab as this second round comes to a close. And so far through the first two rounds, we're seeing some real nice boxing ability from Lamont Peterson. You see him landing a nice counter right hand on Danny Garcia. Danny Garcia is coming forward. The bloody nose of Garcia started right there. A little bit later in round two, more good defensive skills, showing that amateur background. Beautiful right hand to the chest of Danny Garcia. He's making contact with him and letting him know he's in this fight. Hang on, back up, back up. There we go. On to round three. And Ray, this fight kind of a, a throwback to the old days. World title holders would need an over the weight bounce on a regular basis. They'll pick up a little extra money. Stay busy without having to uh, struggle to make weight. In this case, uh, both fighters are title holders. We heard Al Michaels earlier point out that they were weighed today in their street clothes, and Lamont Peterson was 22 pounds over his normal weight. Is he carrying a heavy wallet no, in his pocket? The, it tells you these little guys are big guys. <laughs> in reality. But uh, again, looking at Peterson, he's really doing a great job moving, not being a stationary target. Really frustrating Garcia. Garcia can't get, he can't get uh, padded. He's reaching for his punch. You see that? Looping right hand. And that's because of the movement from Peterson. Chance off for Danny Garcia. And Puerto Rican descent. His family still living in Puerto Rico. But makes his home in North Philadelphia. Peterson's really using that jab keeping his man off balance. And what he does, he just sticks it out there and he, bl he blinds, he blinds Garcia with the glove. He's yeah, Ray, power. I'm sorry. Yeah, Ray, a lot of good stuff from Lamont Peterson and you alluded to Danny Garcia reaching a little bit with his punches. That's because of the lack of jab and the good movement and jab from Lamont Peterson. So if Danny can get that punch going to the chest or to the body, he'll start to have more success against Peterson to stationize his target. Notice that Garcia came in and he was ready to punch, but Peterson wasn't there. That's very good boxing. That's what he, that's what you call ring generalship. Utilizing the ring, right. utilizing your speed and movement. Oh. 
Anderson continues. Successful in staying away from Garcia. Final seconds. Round three. It's the premier boxing champions on NBC from Barclay Center in Brooklyn. Back in a moment. Time. You can open up a little more, but be cautious, all right? Okay. I like a counter right hand over top of that jab, but keep yourself in position where you can get it. Don't pull straight back and turn around. Don't let him rock the seat. Harry Hunter in the, in the corner, Lamont Peterson, for the little Q&A questions and answers. He, I, I haven't seen that too often where you see a trainer ask his boxer, what do you think? What are you doing right? What are you doing wrong? <laughs> well, Barry Hunter is a very good trainer. Well respected, he knows his, the fundamentals, and you can see that Peterson is well schooled. And as you saw on uh, Steve Farhood scorecard, he had first three rounds, all 10-9 for Danny Garcia. Which fighter do you feel should be the aggressor? Well, Danny has to be the aggressor being the short of the two, but he also has to utilize his jab a little bit more to get inside. It's just the hand speed of Peterson, and the movement, the lateral movement of Peterson that's really driving him crazy. This is what frustrates fighters, especially when they, when they can't land a shot. And in the corner of Peterson in the last round, they told him, okay, you fought the first three rounds very intelligent. Let's start bringing the right hand off the top of the Danny Garcia jab, but don't stand straight up whenever you're done. Get underneath the hook. Shut, 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 shut. Look at Peterson slip. No knockdown. No knockdown. No knockdown. In your gloves. It's not gloves. a knockdown. No knockdown. No knockdown. Let's go. Peterson affected at using the entire ring. Oh, the movement of Peterson is beautiful. And he's able to drop a right hand at the throat of the left jab. All good movement. Lateral movement. What? Getting a little confident. Extremely. And you can hear the reaction from the crowd. And they're not happy with the lack of action in comparison to the uh, previous fight. We saw a total of three knockdowns. The fight between Lee and Quillen, which ended up in a split draw. They'll hear it from the crowd again. And we talked about it in the pre-fight game plan. Lamont Peterson has to be careful early. He's boxing very nicely, lands a nice right hand, left hook, backs up a little too much, falls out of the ring there, not a knockdown. But, you know, good work from Lamont Peterson in that last round, guys. And uh, I'd like to see him pick it up a little more in this round, but so far very effective through the first four rounds. DJ, the biggest career moment for Lamont Peterson was bittersweet. Back in December, four years ago, he won the 140-pound junior weatherweight title by decision over Amir Khan, but then was stripped of the title when it was revealed that Peterson had used testosterone. He comes in at 32 wins, two defeats, one draw, 17 of the wins by knockdown. Right hand by Garcia did no damage, but it did get in. Barry Hunter, the trainer of uh, Lamont Peterson, just yelled out uh, this round, uh, frustration. That's what they want to do against Garcia, frustrating. Right hand and a left, good combination by Peterson. A 
love the concentration of Peterson. Know exactly what you anticipate from Garcia. And he'll move out of the corner. Take it back to the center of the ring. Hand jump. I think Garcia should start going to the body. Slow his man down. According to our unofficial score, Steve Farhead, he had a 10-9 round for, for Peterson in, in round four. The previous three rounds, this unofficial, going to Garcia. But it has not been action-packed to this point. Well, again, Garcia should go to the body. The body can't move. The head can move. doubling up on the left and then coming in with the right hand. And hear the anxiety in the crowd after what they saw in the earlier bout. Oh, right hand got in this time. Did not do much damage. Garcia able to land, but it wasn't flush. In the first fight tonight, something you don't usually see, a split decision draw between Peter Quillen and Andy Lee. And let's go back to the third round of that fight where there's a bit of a controversy. In that, Quillen knocked Lee down. Two of the judges scored it 10-8, 10-8, because they usually follow what the referee calls it. That was a knockdown, it's usually 10-8. But a veteran, Glenn Feldman, who has been around a long time, one of the judges scored it 10-9 in favor of Quillen. That one point obviously turned out to be big, the difference between the split decision draw and a Quillen victory. But I spoke a moment ago with David Berlin. He is the executive director of the New York State Athletic Commission. He tells me it is not written in stone that it is the judge's prerogative if they feel a fighter is getting back into the fight that it doesn't have to be a 10-8 round even if he was not down. Obviously, the judge felt that Lee got back into the fight enough in that third round to make it 10-9, and therefore, a split decision draw, gentlemen. All right, Mark? thank you. Thank you, Kenny. When Peter Quillen and his people look back at the bout, they will not be happy, <laughs> despite that explanation. Once again, Garcia tries to double up with the left. You see the body shots thrown by Garcia. That's, that's where he should go. And I mentioned the fact that Peterson punches are very accurate and precise. Maybe not as hard as Garcia, but sharp. Very direct. Combination by Garcia able to land. And you see in the sixth round, guys, the pace of this fight really starting to change. Danny Garcia digging those body shots in like Ray had mentioned earlier what he needs to do. Lamont Peterson is starting to stand in front of Garcia more. Let's see what happens in the next few rounds. Ray did want to make a correction earlier. I said that Peterson was stripped of his title. He was stripped of one, but he kept another in the world of alphabet titles. So he is still officially a title holder. That 
movement from Peterson is not allowing Garcia to get his balance. To really get his timing down. Peterson effectively using the jab and a right hand. And again, those punches by Peterson may not hurt Garcia, but they're frustrating him. He's so close yet so far. You see something, I know. But you got to go behind the jab. Don't take no crazy chances. It's not necessary. This is where you separate the boys from the men's. When this guy's taking deep breaths like that, you got to take your last breath and I'm going to give it to you now, brother. You heard me? Let's breathe. Throw your breathing. Let's go. Three. Hey, you're throwing a lot more Three. punches. Three. Hey, he's going to stand up. Lamont well, Peterson continues to stand in this corner between rounds. This is round number seven. Lamont <laughs> <laughs> Peterson of the Purple Trucks out of Washington, D.C. Andy Garcia in what he calls the Giraffe Twit Trucks. And his dad is with Kenny Rice. Thanks, Marv. Well, Angel, what are you seeing in your son right now? Oh, I see Danny trying to be the, he's the aggressor. Peter St. just running around. I keep telling him, touch him down, stay only gonna run so much till he get caught. Is this the way you thought this fight with those styles coming in would go? He's gonna try to run, but he's not a boxer. Kenny run for 12, you don't win running. You gotta stand in, you gotta point. Like you gotta, you gotta, you gotta land shot. He ain't landing nothing but running. This, that's, that's not what we want. We wanted to fight. Stop, stop, he's getting stop. weak right now. Look, he's getting tired already. Look, he just ain't going nowhere no more. It's well, a matter of time. The longer the fight goes, any concerns stop. about that? You want your son to end this quicker? No, no. It, it, I mean, it goes 12, it goes 12. It ends earlier, it ends earlier. But that's the plan. We train for 12 rounds. All right, thank you, Mark. All right, Kenny. And earlier, in a conversation that uh, Kenny Rice had with Lamont Peterson, Peterson said this will be over in nine or 10 rounds. This is round seven, just past the halfway mark. Ray, I do have a fact of the night for you. Danny Garcia, as it turns out, has six toes on his right foot. And he believes that the, the extra appendage, let's say, is an advantage. Said the toe is the reason that he's never been off balance and he's never been down. And he's able to land with a nice combination right there oh right hand by peterson and great body shots by garcia through a number of those shots That'll do it for round seven. This Wednesday, April 15th, marks the 30th anniversary of the legendary Hagler Hearns fight from Caesars Palace in Las Vegas. It was billed as the fight, it turned out to be the war. On that night in Las Vegas, there was no strategy. The two guys just met in the center of the ring and tried to kill each other. It lasted eight minutes. Stopped at 2.01 of the third round. It's been referred to as both eight minutes of fury and eight minutes of hell. I was breathless that night. Ray, you were there as well, calling the fight for HBO. Yes, what do you sir. remember about it? Well, I contemplated coming back at that time when I saw that fight in those three rounds. I said, I'm good. <laughs> So you were actually considering retirement. We're coming, no, coming back. Right. 
And I, I, mean, those, I mean, coming back. And those three were driving. Right. I saw those three yeah. rounds, and I said, I'm okay. Yeah. Round eight, scheduled for 12. You notice now that uh, Peterson is being aggressive. Body shots. Look at those shots to the body. He's trying to walk his man down. Reversal. Reverse. And he's flat footed, which means power. Stop. When the fighter is, is flat footed, that's all power. That's how you generate power. Our unofficial scorecard has it 69 64 in favor of Garcia. And you see this pace this fight changing a bit, Marv. And Danny Garcia's fights with Zab Jude and also Mauricio Herrera. He faded a little bit down the stretch. Team Peterson knows that, and they're trying to pick up the pace here in these last few rounds. Look at those shots to the bottom. By Peterson. Keep him up, keep him up, Danny, keep him up. It is really picked up here in the eighth. by Peterson. Garcia right back. He's flat. Peterson is flat for it because he's generating power here. Watch the shots to the body. He digs. He talks. Speed. He, he is pursuing Garcia. Big round for Lamont Peterson. And like I said, he learned this all from Barry Hunter, a, a great trainer. Fundamentals here. There appears to be a little blood coming from uh, the white eye of Garcia. Peterson continuing to land, looking very confident now. He's been setting it up with the jab. Time! Premier Boxing Champions on NBC is brought to you by Corona, who invites you to find your beach. Peterson anxious to come out of his corner, particularly after his performance in round eight. Once again to the jab. And he's been landing on Garcia. You can see the mouse under each eye. You can really see the conditioning of Peterson. I mean, he told us yesterday he didn't even take time to go to the bottom to cut his, to trim his beard. I mean, he, he is really being an athlete here. More than a boxer, he's an athlete here. Mark Peterson have made his professional debut September of 2004 at the age of 20. Won his first 27 fights. Quickly, quickly. And Lamont Peterson once again. Showing his confidence. Uh, 
Is that a bolo punch attempt? That wasn't my bolo punch. <laughs> but it worked. It's working, I tell you that. He really wants to frustrate. Pat Peterson out here. He's talking, talking trash to Garcia. Garcia, it appeared, on the edge of the early rounds, but Peterson has really come on. Oh, right hand by Garcia. But he, he went with it, but the conditioning of Peterson is, is, is truly uh, uh, amazing. Right hand again. Garcia able to land. That misfire. Blocked, and then nice combination to the body by Garcia. And Peterson, again, his concentration. Look at him. Walk this man down. And cut the ring off. Step to his side, getting angles. Hard shot by Peterson to the midsection of Garcia. Turning southpaw, turning southpaw now. With his lead with his right. Lamont Peterson lands a right at the bell. See some real good work from Lamont Peterson here in the last round. He's really flipped the script on Danny Garcia, retreating in the beginning, and now got the champion with his back against the ropes, landing his nice jabs the body, overhand rights, and really got the champion's, champion's attention in that last round, guys. All right, DJ is on to round 10. Garcia at the early rounds. Peterson has come on and has continued to show confidence, showing different angles to Garcia. Would you describe this one? I, I think that's one of the I think that's a Peterson move. But he's so composed, so relaxed. Peterson is just having fun here. Keep up, then. On the unofficial scorecard of boxing historian Steve Farhood. Steve has it 88-83 for Garcia by virtue of the first three rounds and then rounds five, six, and seven. Right, let's uh, check in with Kenny Rice. Kenny. All right, thanks, Mark Peterson Corner. Now are you feeling good about this fight? I am, but you never know this boxer. You gotta keep boxing, sweet signs. Did I see correctly, you two rounds ago after Lamont came back to the corner, you said this fight's over? That's it. What it is, Danny got to have a target in front of him. We're not going to give him that. We're going to be smart. What you tell him between rounds? We can hunt him down now. Control anger. Behind the jab, walk him down, put him on his heels. He can do nothing. All right, thank you. Marv? All right, uh, Kenny Ray, uh, entertainment value or... Strictly taunting to bother your opponent. Taunting capital T. Yeah. Particularly if the judges agree with Steve Farhood, Peterson is behind on the scorecard, although he has certainly picked it up the last few rounds. We have not seen much of it. Right hand just off the mark. Crowd not appreciating the antics of Lamont. The rest of this fight being brought to you with no commercial interruptions by Corona, who invites you to find your beach.
Let's finish it. Let's go, Lamar. Keep your hands up, man. Don't fall right. asleep. Right. Look, 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 look. Don't fall Let's asleep out, in there. Don't fall asleep. I got you. you feel me? Hunt him down. Stop ripping shots, man. Stop ripping shots. The man that's stronger than you. Hold the ball. Get with him. Keep him off. Watch. He jumps around. He jumps around and he beats in with some crazy shit. Lamont Peterson continues to demonstrate the kind of shape he's in. He has been standing between rounds right from the start. Rovado. He shows that he's right. He shows that he's in tremendous shape. And you see the Steve Farhood unofficial scorecard. He has at 97-93 for Garcia. Peterson winning the last round, according to Steve. Although in the corner of Lamont Peterson, Barry Hunter feels that his fighter is in front. Combination by Garcia. And a good shot to the body, and again, Danny Garcia taking a hit from the Peterson. Body shot by Lamont Peterson. And look at Lamont Peterson as he walks his man down. Very impressive, especially the shots that he's throwing. Keep those hands high. That's a push. Garcia caught. Peterson off balance. Don't push him. Don't push him. Those shots that got sealed through, those are the kind of shots. Because if you throw one shot, chances are you're not going to do much damage. Get a warning this time. Harvey Dot, the referee. Tells Peterson he pushed the right hand by Garcia. And a combo. Final minute. Round 11. Hey, keep him up. Keep him up. Keep him up. Low blow from Garcia. These are hard shots being exchanged. Green hand got in from Peterson. Good shots for both fighters. And the combination as a follow-up. Again, it's Peterson measuring. Look at the face of Danny Garcia. You know he's been in a fight. Good round, 11. Tonight, Premier Boxing Champions coverage continues on NBCSN at 11 Eastern with more terrific bouts. Log on to NBCSports.com to find the channel in your area. When they hold you, push them all for you. Hey, down hey you, baby. look Don't at me, it. look at me. I That's never lie. Right. See in the last round a little bit of frustration by Danny Garcia. Lamont Peterson standing a little too straight up. Danny Garcia trying to get a separation, a little space, because Lamont was smothering him. A little flat footed there and pushed him straight back. Lamont goes down, no knockdown. So for the second time tonight, we go to a 12th and final round. And the earlier fight between Lee and Quillen, it was a, a split draw. All right, let's go. This is going to be a tough one to score. Steve Farhead has it 106-103 for Garcia. Peterson has been the aggressor for the last portion of this fight. Oh, right hand by Peterson. And a left, followed by the combination. 
Peterson. One of the shots, the body shot. I mean, really digging deep. Peterson will throw some incredible body shots. He tried to load up on a right. Peterson is flat footed, looking for the knockout punch. Fighters come down off their toes to gain power. Peterson is quite candid. He says he's not a real big puncher, but he's a hard puncher. He is a hard puncher. That he is. And consistent and accurate. That's what he said to us yesterday. He will hurt his opponent. That's a low blow by Garcia, but he's not a power punching machine, as he refers to some other fighters in his division. Right hand by Peterson. Coming up on a minute remaining in this 12th and final round. Continue to exchange as a left by Peterson. This is what I call closing the show. When you become aggressive, especially when the fight's this close. Peterson's walking, walking his man down, staying inside, throwing big shots. will come up on 30 seconds remaining. Strong finish by Lamont Peterson. But will be a tough one to score. 20 seconds to go. It's been all Peterson in the final round. Final seconds. From this Barkley Center crowd. No Back with the decision in a moment. by Peterson. He's able to land with a nice combination right there. Lamont Peterson lands a right. This is a tough fight to score. Steve Farhead has it 115-113 in favor of Garcia, who was very impressive early rounds. And then the crowd was booing for lack of action, and then Peterson came on, came on strong. Apparently they're rechecking the scores. Verifying. Lamont Peterson, very impressive in the last three, four rounds. And if you look at faces, it appears that Danny Garcia got beaten up. And uh, Lamont looks like he could go again tomorrow. Come on, looks fresh. Keep going all day, man. All right, we're set for the decision. Let's go to Michael C. Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, having gone 12 full rounds of action, we'll go to your judges' scorecards. Your first judge, ringside Don Ackerman, scores the fight 114 to 114. He sees it even. That score overruled, however, by judges Kevin Morgan and Steve Weisfeld, who both scored the fight the same at 115 to 113 for the winner by majority decision, Danny Swift.